Hey guys, this is Chris Brigandi from Brigandi Coins and Collectibles. I got a great item today. It's a Grover Cleveland Alexander hand-signed and hand-written letter. Um, obviously, he's a 1938 Hall of Famer. He was there on induction day when Cooperstown first opened. Uh, so his autograph is rare and obviously highly in, in demand. A uh, little history real quick. 1911, Grover Cleveland Alexander came up with, the, uh, with Philadelphia. Uh, 28 wins as a rookie. Remember, this is a time where guys were pitching 40, 50 games a year, and they weren't pitching four or five innings a game. They were pitching full games. You didn't have a relief pitcher. You didn't have a setup man. You didn't have a closer, as we do today, as you know. So 28 wins his rookie year, 1911. 1915, 16, 17, he wins the pitching triple crown, back to back to back, which is the most wins, uh, lowest ERA, and uh, most strikeouts for a pitcher. 1918, he uh, goes, it's World War I. He gets drafted to the Army, he has to go to France. So he misses 19, uh, 18, 19, 19. He comes back in 1920. However, while he was in France, in the city he was in, he was exposed to mustard gas. So he comes back from World War I with epilepsy and PT, well, undiagnosed PTSD at the time. So he comes back and obviously everyone's worrying about his condition because he's still playing. He goes on in 1920 somehow to win another triple crown in, in pitching. So after, with all these effects, he's still at the top of his game. And they have stories from him in the 1920s and at this, you know, in, in 1920 of him pitching. He would go into the dugout, he'd pass out from epilepsy. He'd get back up and he'd strike out the side. So just a testament to, to how good he actually was. So he, went, that was, he was on the Cubs in the 20s at the... Uh, 1926 he gets traded to the Cardinals and the Cardinals are in the World Series and they're facing the New York Yankees and murderers row Lou Gehrig Babe Ruth Tony Lazari so he wins his first game he comes back he wins his first two games he comes back in game seven bases are loaded they're, they're up a couple runs Tony Lazari's at bat he comes in the seventh inning strikes out Tony Lazari and then holds the Yankees off for the final two innings crowning St. Louis as the champs, all due to him. So a little extensive history, I know, but that's how important he is in history. So let's take a quick look at the letter before I t go on to tell you a little more about uh, Cleveland himself. So again, handwritten letter completely in his hand. This is on stationery from the Ohio bookstore. That, that's not necessarily important, but what's important to know is at the time, they were always writing letters. So they always needed paper. So anywhere they went, whether it was a hotel or a bookstore, any place that had stationery, guys that were writing letters would always grab paper to take with them because it wasn't as abundant as it is today. So this is what the letter says. I am sending you my autograph, but I have no pictures. I can get one from this man whose business card I am sending you. And I put my autograph on those he sells. Sincerely, Grover Cleveland Alexander. Um, it also comes with, if you can pan over here quickly, this is the original postmarked envelope it, it came uh, with. So the front, um, it's to a James Kozlowski. Um, that's all in Grover Cleveland Alexander's hand. It's postmarked Cincinnati, Ohio, December 10th, 1943. And you, you got the canceled uh, stamps here, war bonds. Obviously, at that time, we're in World War II. Um, also, he referenced it came with a business card, so this man James can buy a picture. That way, Grover uh, Alexander can sign it. So it's a it's the business um, business card for the bookstore and the manager James Hardwick, who sells up the pictures. So it's pretty cool that it also comes with the envelope and uh, the business card because stuff like this usually you just get the letter, which is great. But this is uh, additional provenance, which is uh, something collectors really love. Let's talk a little about the signature itself and the handwriting. Um, found in pen ink blue, and it's just outstanding quality. The paper's great, too. It's white. It's clean. There's no foxing. There's no soiling. There's no holes, rips, tears, etc. cetera. Um, and also what's nice is you get a nice, large Grover Alexander um, on the bottom there. Typically, he signed just G.C. Alexander. Um, too long to write, but for whatever reason, on this day he penned just a you know his full name, which uh, again is rare, um, and great condition. Um, and the letter itself is also outstanding condition. 
So a little more about, um, oh, before I go on, I want to talk to you about the photo. The photo is <laughs> awesome too. So we, we paired it with this original uh, type 1 photo. So you hear that term a lot. So what exactly does type 1 mean? Type 1 photo is a photo that was produced at the time it was taken off of the original negative. So this was a uh, 1920s photo and it was, it was printed off the original negative in, in the 1920s. Um, he's on the Cubs here. Um, like I said, he played right after World War II for the Cubs up until 1926 when he was uh, traded or sold to the uh, Cardinals on their uh, World Series run. Um, so that's obviously much better to have an original period photo than you know something we just get printed today. Um, I, so going back to Grover Cleveland Alexander, he was af after he uh, retired, um, he was a bit of a recluse. So he he actually did play and he coached and he managed a little bit, but that was the only time you would find him out and about. Um, in the 1930s, he played for the House of David, which was a famous uh, Jewish ball club at, from up in Michigan, but they were a barnstorming league, and they played a lot of uh, teams in the Negro Leagues. Actually, he played with Satchel Paige um, in the 1940s and, and managed his teams as well, go over Cleveland Alexander. <clears throat> so it was really difficult to get anything signed by him, especially signed baseballs, because the only way you would get that is if you actually saw him out in person. Otherwise, the only way to get his autograph would be through the mail. Um, so you you just do see a lot more letters and what they call government postcards and flats versus signed photos and signed baseballs. But his autograph on any medium is very rare. So this is a great piece we just got in. Um, it's fully authenticated, obviously. The photo is fully authenticated as well. Um, just a real cool item, uh, framed up, and you know we did. A, I think we did a great job matching a, an original photo. If you have any questions at all, post them below. Uh, you can email us. Uh, Chris at brigandycoin.com. Uh, share the video. Let me know what you think.